there welcome back to my channel it is Yvonne from ginger chick rehab welcome back and if you're new here I'm glad to have you checking out my content for the first time on my channel along with my husband Chris we do thrift store flips we do lots of DIYs trash to treasure and furniture flips and we share the process of what we do to these items to get them ready to resell so in today's video, I am sharing a furniture flip. I head out on my thrifting adventures. I do thrift with me's. I had picked up a couple bookshelves and I was super excited. Bookshelves sell really well in our retail book booth we sell here locally. And especially when you can find a wooden one, oh my gosh, it just, I was just in awe. So we are today are sharing the process of what we did to these two bookshelves to get them ready to resell. So for me, this is a wonderful find. Anytime that I can run across a real wood bookshelf, I am so happy to snag it up if the price is right. And though you may look at this one as being a short one and it's missing a shelf and it's got that contact paper, not everybody has a space for a taller size. This would look perfect under a window. So Chris is going to find out if this contact paper is going to be hard to take off and it's going to need the assistance of the heat gun or if it'll just peel off. It's just one of those things you never know when you're out thrifting. You're just going to have to take a chance to find a nice piece like this to do the work that it needs to be done to be flipped. So luckily, with a little bit of elbow grease and some strength, it is pulling off and not even coming off in pieces like it usually does. So what a blessing here. I'm not sure why the previous owner put it on, maybe to hide some scrap scrapes and bumps. I'm, who knows? But the funny thing is, is they put that contact paper right over my pet peeve of a price tag. Chris was first assessing this piece. He thought he was going to have to cut not only a shelf, but a piece for the bottom. It was pulled away. So luckily all it was was a couple new nails and it was nice and tight and no need to cut another piece for that bottom. So Chris is showing you here how this should have had a shelf in it. You can see the little holes where these little pegs should have been. The pegs hold the shelf in. Now it didn't have any of the pegs, but you can actually buy the replacement pegs off of Amazon. And of course the ones we have are not the right size. He's just going to size up one of his drill bits to drill a hole that's the appropriate size for this peg to fit into. So now where he knows where his shelf placement is going to be, he needs to now cut a piece of lumber so it has a new shelf. So all he's doing now is measuring off of what he needs to cut. Then now he's going over to his table saw using that tape measure again to set the blade and the guide where he needs to make that cut. So he's just cutting it off a piece of plywood. It's the most cost efficient and it'll be nice and sturdy. So now he needs to reset his table saw. Now that he's got the length, he needs to do the width. And this is a, going to be a smaller piece. So he's going to use a jig that he made to hold the wood securely that it stays nice and level and doesn't bounce around on him. Well, you know, just because you cut it to the measurements you took, it's better to do a dry fit. So that's what he's doing now is he's putting all four of the pegs and those new holes that he made. And then he's going to be setting that piece of wood on to make sure that it, it actually fits. So I don't know if you all believe in God wink moments. I surely do. I am blessed. We are blessed beyond compare. But I was at my local Habitat looking to see if they had anything that I was interested in. And I ran across this banding and I'm like, hey, I've seen other woodworkers on YouTube use this. So for a dollar, I kid you not, for a dollar, Chris just happened to be working on this project. I happened to just bring it home like the day before. What a perfect opportunity to get to try out this banding. So all he has to do is cut it to size. And we actually have an old iron, of course, <laughs> in the workshop. And so that's all you do. You cut it 
to length and you use the heat of a no steam iron to iron it on. And wow, I was actually amazed and I think he was even amazed. Now cost efficiently, we probably just would have done the water putty just to fill in that raw edge of the of the plywood, but wow, I yep, god wink moment here. So then he just flips it over and then he just cuts off the excess with his utility knife. I can say that we may never have tried this product before. We have never tried this product before, but what nice to buy it for a dollar at your local habitat and get to try out a product that you weren't quite sure the difficulty of how how it was to use. But wow, I think is definitely a product we would pay full price and use again. So talking about water putty, as you see, somebody had drilled a hole in the back of that tongue and groove on the back of this. So of course you could leave it there, but no, for me, I'm going to fill the hole. If the new owner wants to drill a new hole, they can. So we are just filling that, or he's just filling that in with some Durham water putty. So he did tape the best back side of the hole using some masking tape because, yep, it's a hole. Things will fall straight through. So the nice thing about the Durham water putty is for whatever situation you're working with, you mix it up to the consistency you want. So since he's having this stand up right and trying to get it nice and flush and doesn't want to lay it down to push it out the back, that he can make it up a little bit drier. And the drier you make it up, the faster, of course, that it dries. And yep, why he had some of the Durham water putty mixed up, he went through and got any of those knots that were on the plywood piece, any of that edge where the banding was meeting, and anything on the bookshelves themselves that needed were too deep of scrapes that would just be sanded off. So now he's just taking his orbital sander and making them all nice and smooth. So I have to say that we are getting quite comfortable with our sprayer and I highly suggest it. We did have to buy a different little spray nozzle, the little tips that spray out. So I think we're using a 211, which means it does like a two inch spray and 11 pressure of paint coming out. I think that's how it was explained to all our research and YouTube searching of different of the different spray heads. So what it is, it's the little nozzle inside that orange piece. So I have to say that, yes, it's a little bit of work to clean up, but boy, it does just make a nice, smooth, silky coat of paint on these items. So if you're not already part of our YouTube family, make sure you hit the subscription button so you don't miss when we're doing our thrift store flips. So this is just a personal preference how we flip the pieces, the items upside down, get the most coverage for the surface area and then are able to flip them back up for the second coat. This prevents you marring up or scraping up that top. So can you see here why we are falling in love with that sprayer? Oh my gosh, look at how smooth that paint is applied. So yes, we could have applied polycrylic using the sprayer, but just for timing of what we had going on with our lives, it was just easier just to use a can of the spray polycrylic. So yeah, we considered putting a top on that little bookshelf, but I just absolutely loved the height of it. I thought it was a great bookshelf use, and I also thought it was a great bench use, but I wondered if it was missing its contact paper. So I thought that I would just put these tiles on, just a little st stenciling, a little something something. I just picked these off of my Silhouette de Design Studio. I tried to keep the most that I didn't have a whole bunch of pieces and parts to weed out, that does make it a little bit difficult when you're using vinyl as your stencil. But I absolutely knew that these would just give this little bookshelf a little something something. So next to weeding these pieces and parts of these tiles out was measuring to make sure that you had them centered. That's not always the easiest job, but it is worth the time to take to make sure that they are centered. I mean, 
you perfectly imperfect. It may be a little bit off centered, but just try your best to get your stencils as centered as you can. Even a manufactured piece isn't completely perfect. And I chose to make my first stencil as much of the 12 by 12 mat as I could. So you see it's really close to the edges. So I'm just here laying some masking tape. So when I go to put my paint stencil paint on that I don't get it onto areas I don't want to be painted. So oh, I got that part done. Wow, that was a lot of time, but I feel it's going to be well worth my time and effort because I do absolutely love how these tiles turned out. So yes, really on this piece of furniture, when you're doing a stencil, you could use whatever kind of paint you want. I am just a creature of habit and my go-to is always this Apple Barrel Multi-Use in white when I'm doing my black pieces. And then the makeup sponge from the Dollar Tree. And same technique though, when you're doing a stencil, you don't wanna put a lot of paint on your applicator. You wanna have just a little bit on. It's better to go over with multiple coats than accidentally squish it underneath your stencil. Now I will say that I wish I would have had Chris help me figure out how to lift this piece up because ooh, my back by the time I got this stenciled definitely needed to do some yoga stretching after bending over to apply paint on the top of this. So I did end up doing three coats of this white to cover. As you can see, every time it was drying, it was still like a gray color. And I'm going to be antiquing wax over this white, so I want to leave it as crisp white as I can. So it's well worth my time, but not my back's time, to get that to the white that I need it to be. So now I'm going to be using the assistance of the blow dryer to heat up this tape, heat up this vinyl, and a little prayer that it, this vinyl does not take off a lot of the paint that's previously. I don't think we went into this job thinking that we really needed to sand the top of this because I was going to apply a stencil. Sometimes when you're in the middle of a project, you think, oh... I think it needs a little something more because if we would have known at the beginning, we probably would have sanded it a little bit better so that that paint would absorb in, especially not waiting more than 24 hours to put, apply a stencil to the top. But the way I look at it is if some of the paint, the black paint peels off when I'm taking the stencil, it gives it that aged look. It gives it that perfectly imperfect and it's okay. I don't want anybody, that distressed look is in, the aged look is in. So don't stress or try to go back in and try to paint where it, maybe some of that vinyl had peeled some of the paint off. Just leave it. It adds character. Now I'm going in with some 220 sandpaper and I'm just distressing the edges of this piece, blending anywhere where some of the paint might have, the black paint might have peeled off, and then just smoothing out a little bit of what you could feel from the raised of the paint of that stencil that I had put on the top of these pieces. Just lightly going over the painted area, not a heavy hand. I don't want to sand it off, I just want it so it's not raised. And I do know that you can buy stencils that are reusable, but the fun for me is making a original stencil for each project I do. I love that I'm a monthly member to Cameo and to Cricut, and that I can always, my pieces can always be a little bit different. I don't have to keep reusing the same stencil every time. Especially since I do actually have a lot of repeat buyers in my booth that it's just kind of fun for them to come and see what we've created. Now that I have that top all smooth and sanded, I need to seal in that white paint. So I'm going to give another light coat of polycrylic. So if I would not seal this in when I go to antiquing wax, the antiquing wax actually will take that multi-use paint off. That's why I said you could use my, I could have used my kills, I could have used 
well basically the kills because i think the chalk paint would act the same but for me this is just i'm comfortable with what i'm doing so i am like i said a very creature of habit so i'm just going to seal this paint in so when i go to antique wax this piece that i'm not taking that stencil i'm not taking all that hard work off and especially since chris would have a heavier hand than i would i'm glad that i polycrylic this in they guys just do so this is all i'm doing i just want to i love this dark white of this piece but i you want to blend that all together you want it to look like it's always been there and it's aged over time i just absolutely love this antiquing wax on black and i absolutely am obsessed with antiquing wax over a white stencil So would you have left the top of this short bookshelf plain or do you like that I added the detail of these medallions, these tiles? I, To me, I just think it's a nice accent, a nice focal point. Reminds me of kind of like laying a doily on the top of something. And I love that we could make a shelf. Yes, it's not quite the same material as the bookshelf itself but now it is useful to hold some decor and if you are a reader it can hold some of your books and as rare find as a wooden bookshelf was for me to find that tongue and groove on the back oh my gosh absolutely love love it i hope that somebody who does put books in it or decor in it just leaves a little peek of that oh a little peek of that tongue and groove so you can see it i absolutely love see how i am just obsessed with that antiquing wax over black and those distressed edges yep so yes bookshelves can be used for books but they also can be used for decor items also So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of our thrift store flips on these bookshelves? I, like I said, bookshelves sell really well, so I'm very happy when I run across them. And what did you think of the mosaic tile work that I had kind of, the medallions I had put on the top? I actually think that it gives it a little bit of awe factor. And yeah, it kind of did remind me of putting a doily on something, but just something, a little something, something just to give it something to pop. So if you are part of my YouTube family, I always, always, always appreciate every one of you. You guys watching our videos, giving us a kind, supportive comment, giving us a thumbs up, just lets YouTube know that you like this kind of content and they will keep recommending us. Every time I see us on a recommendation list, I am just in awe and just so humbly blessed. And if you're new to my channel and you like this kind of content, hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video.